You know, when I started making this documentary and I heard the word queer, I had an absolutely allergic reaction to the word. It brought me right back to the school playground where bullies used to use it over and over to cause me humiliation and to hurt me. And I guess even today, I still have a degree of queer fear. But what does it really mean to be queer in Britain? And are we having a queer revolution? Um, to me, there's a bit of sort of a bit of a homophobic connotation behind the word queer. It's not very nice, I think. Uh, should not be queer. I'm not sure how I feel about it. I've personally had the word used against me numerous times. It's nice to be able to own it now. Queer is a good word. It's a good word. Queer is a very good word. Queer to me <laughs> is power, like queer yeah. means power, because we've taken this word that was derogatory mm -hmm. and hateful, and now it means like love, community. Mm How -hmm. oh, yeah, I'm queer. Mm -hmm. You wish you were. I'm on my way to meet some performers who are bringing queer center stage at the now iconic Sink the Pink club night. I have wanted to go to Sink the Pink for the longest time. Tonight, the rule book goes out the window. We're all gonna be a little bit queer. Do you know what's incredible about that? All of those people on that stage were once the loser kid in school, the weird kid that was outcast, and now look at them all together. We're now cool. I wanted to find out more about how this club and its performers have embraced queer. I like to say that I'm queer gender fluid. Like if it's on a spectrum and there's men on this side and women on this side, mm. and then there's everything in between, I'm just kind of running back and forth all day long, every day. What does queer mean to you? I think of queer as the entire umbrella of people that don't fall into the everyday hetero man and woman ideals. Sure. Queer can also be the dorks and weirdos that got made fun of. A lot of the time that was because you were gay or lesbian or bisexual or trans, but it also could have been just because you were the weird kid. Yeah. You were weird and you liked things that other kids didn't like. It's not a membership scheme, some get in, some don't get in, it's like... No. Anyone that feels queer is queer. Anyone that can um, have solidarity and support the rest of the queer community is a fellow queer. It's just blown my mind. It's blowing my mind. This is like an adult's playground. There's even a dog over there dressed up. <laughs> it feels like my first pride all over again when I was 17 years old and dressing up to go out and experience my community for the first time. If there's a queer revolution happening in Britain, then what's it all about? Trans queer writer Sean agreed to meet me to explain the movement. When I first saw the queue at the end of LGBT, i be honest with you, I was a bit, not repulsed, but I, I was taken aback by it. Mm. I thought, what is that doing there? And who gave you permission to put it there? I didn't understand it and I didn't want to understand it because for me, it was just be, being dragged back, kicking and screaming to the playground mm. where those boys were above me calling me that thing. Queer is about reclaiming something that maybe the mainstream gay rights movement left behind. As gay rights became more mainstream, you have gay marriage, which obviously is like importing a very heterosexual idea. Queer has picked up people that feel left behind by that in some way. And I think queer as well is about maybe being a bit more ambiguous about gender. It's something that younger people are identifying with more and more. Do you think anyone then can be a little bit queer? Yes, I think like, well, 16 to 24 year olds, I think a survey was done that half of them say they're not entirely straight. What do you think has led these kids to identify with queer more and more as time goes on? 
I think it's just because inherently there is the idea that actually sexuality is a spectrum. So, I mean, I encounter this in my own life as well. So, like, um, the type of men that would be attracted to me are not necessarily gay. A lot of straight identified men are attracted to, say, trans women. Queer actually admits that everyone has a bit of a spectrum and actually bodies and gender aren't as integral to uh, your mindset as people think they are. For the older generation who don't quite get it, if you had to put it in a, a short definition for them to understand a bite-sized chunk, what would it say? It would be standalone question mark. It's inherently questioning. So Q, sometimes people on LGBTQ, they will say the Q stands for queer or questioning. And actually, I think they, the two words are linked because it's actually saying, maybe you're not so sure about this. Queer, if you're gonna sort of like sum it up, it would be, I don't know the answer, but why are you asking the question? When you're trans, it's not that you want a different body. You just want your body to look the way that you feel inside. It makes you question your entire identity. So to be able to transition and feel more at home in your identity is just the most liberating thing that you can do. I identify as queer. I came out as lesbian. Then a year later, I discovered that I was trans. I went to a private doctor and I was prescribed uh, testosterone. Chest surgery cost me 5,000 pounds. Please donate to a trans man in need. And this is me holding up a sign saying free my nipples. I sold things such as badges, wristbands, this is for trans boys and fizzages. These are my scars. They should fade and become much less noticeable. I'm really proud of my scars. I love my scars. Having the surgery has been one of the best decisions that I've ever made. I 100% feel more myself now. Sex education for transgender people is limited, if not non-existent. But one person who's talking queer sex is Nate, who makes online videos about a subject that most of us shy away from. Today, I'm going to be talking about masturbation for trans guys. It is a little bit noisy. When did you decide to set up this YouTube channel of yours? In springtime, so I wanted to make it before I started Hormones, so that I had more of a full documentary of my transition. When you look back at videos, are you like, whoa? Yeah, I recently did a recap, like a six months recap, and um, yeah, like the physical changes shocked me, actually. I've had some quite significant muscle gain, particularly in my shoulders and my arms and my back. So these are all the comparison things, month by month, wow. apart from five months. T is testosterone. Yeah. What a difference. So like surgery definitely made a difference. I do a video where I explain how for trans men, once you start taking hormones, actually the clitoris will grow. Wow. But that information isn't really very widespread. In fact, there are trans men who didn't even realise that that would happen before they started going on hormones. Well, that would be a bit of a shock, wouldn't it? Looking down and all of a sudden, hello. Well, a lot of the times it's the first change, so yeah. The first change? <laughs> and it will grow up to about an inch, an inch and a half. When we were having a look at your channel there, I saw one of the videos was about trans masturbation. Mm -hmm. There was a period just before I started to where I was just really struggling with this and I didn't know what to do with myself and it just made me feel really shit. If you're trans and your anatomy doesn't match up with your gender in your head, it can actually be something that's quite triggering for gender dysphoria. Oh, okay. We often adjust our language. So, for instance, I would never refer to my anatomy as a clitoris and trans men have quite varied terms. What do you call yours? Uh, junk. Junk. Yeah. Yeah. Dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How, how do you masturbate? Do you mind me asking? There are things you can do um, to make it 
easier for you in terms of dysphoria. So sometimes I use um, products, I use toys and things, which can help me to make it feel more like a phallus. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Textured penis sleeves. Mm -hmm. Seven pack. Seven pack. Does that mean you get seven well, wanks? It means one for every day of the week. Variation. How do you masturbate with this? How does that improve the, the process for you? Well, having taken hormones, the clitoris, or what I would call my junk, has grown. So, let's say that that's my junk. Yeah. And, then, and then you just pop it over the top. Oh, OK, just like this. Yeah, thank sorry, you. Sorry, is that weird? <laughs> <laughs> and You've made me blush, Riyad. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> now I've got an egg. Well, on the inside, it's ribbed. Oh, hello. And a uh, cock ring. Pop it on. And then tighten it. Yeah. It'll make it feel and look more like a penis, which is what I'm trying to achieve. So this, and then this, and you're off to Pleasure Town. Mm-hmm. Happy time. Fantastic. When you began masturbating in, in this new way, mm -hmm. did it make you feel more comfortable with your new body and, and with your new identity? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So this, it goes inside here. The pants are a bit better because if you have uh, the whole harness kit, it feels a bit feminine. Ah, mm. feminine. feminine. Th this is quite blokey, I have to say. There you go. Um, so this is a packer and this is just something that I would wear day to day in my pants. Kind of like a prosthesis. Does it make you feel more whole? Yeah, it does. It's a really strange thing, and I don't know if, if you weren't trans, whether it would really make sense, but for me, it does feel validating just in a really strange way. It makes sense to me. If you go for even a medium, it's that much longer. You're kidding. And I've had a friend who said that it was so long that if he'd sort of packed it down, it sort of reached around and touched the rim of his arse. <laughs> So he couldn't wear it anymore and he had to get a small one. What I like about it is how realistic it is. Like, yeah. it's got this similar sort of movement. The balls are, you know, they're kind of heavy. I also have one for weeing. Essentially, this is just a luxury shoe wee. It was made by a trans man because he recognised that there weren't that many products out there. There weren't that many good products because they weren't being made by people who are trans. Same thing with the masturbation products. They're not made by or for people who are trans. So you have to improvise constantly yeah. with things that aren't made for you. Exactly, and that's why I made the videos. It was meant to be educational for people. My eyes have been opened. <laughs> I'm sure they have. <laughs> they really, really have. It's unbelievable the things that people have come up with to just make it that bit easier. But why do we need an umbrella term? Oh, my Lord, have mercy. I've never seen all of that extraterrestrial stuff. It looks like an award. LGBTQQIAAP. OK, do you, do, do you want me to try and...? OK. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender. One of the T's is transgender. I'm guessing the other T's... I didn't know there were two T's. Transsexual? Transsexual. Q. One of the cues has got to be queer, right? <laughs> questioning? Um, questioning? Is that a thing? Mm, yeah, apparently. I? What is I? I don't know what the I is. Indifferent. <laughs> um, intersex. 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 Asexual. Agender? Agender? Is that right? Or ally? Ally? I don't know the B. Pan Damn it, I'm pan. <laughs> Pansexual. Very good. Well, there's a lot to remember. Were we right? Yep, that confuses me. I imagine someone that doesn't identify as any of them might be um, somewhat confused by what that all means. I've come to Norwich to sit in on a group discussion to hear all about what it's like to be gender non-binary in a society that, for the most part, doesn't even know what that means.
We're all assigned a gender at birth based on our genitalia. The gender binary classifies all people as one of two genders, male or female. But if gender is a spectrum, then non-binary describes anyone who doesn't identify exclusively as one or the other. Hi, are you Katie John? Yeah, hi. Nice, nice to meet you. And you, Riyad, how are you doing? Brilliant, thank you. So this is where it's all going down tonight? Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you identify? This day of the week? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a continual life, life history, really. I've identified as every letter of L, G, B, T, I and Q and A and P and several others besides. All of them? Oh, yeah, absolutely. At some point? Yeah. I finally arrived at happiness, uh, and that is utterly brilliant. And when yeah, did that I, happen? Oh, well, over the last couple of years. I had an op this year. Okay. Um, I'd waited kind of eight years for that. Do you mind me asking <laughs> which op you decided to go for? A labioplasty. Instead of having a new vagina created, uh -huh. um, they basically take all the existing material that's there and, and they create um, an external um, appearance of a vagina. But basically below the clitoris I have no sexually functional working oh, parts, which I pleases see. me because that is just, that's just something I hated. I hated sex. I tried a lot of it just in case with men and women just to see which, if anything, that I was. Again, I worked my way through the labels thinking that sexuality might be the answer. In the end, I found that gender was more of the answer. Right. What a life you have lived. <laughs> so tell me about the group. Like, what's going to go on tonight? Uh, well, we've got a group of about um, 50 or 60 people in the um, Norwich area who explicitly identify as non-binary that we've met. A number of them have been asking over the last year, can we actually have a face-to-face -face meet up? And so that's, this is the first opportunity for some of those people to meet. So not everyone knows each other. It's going to be a very special night. This is a safe space for them, isn't it? I mean, that's actually quite significant. By actually listening to each other, we'll realise how much diversity and variety there is in a group of people who identify as non-binary. So, um, yeah, like, what, what sort of age range are we thinking they'll be tonight? Like, um, highest, lowest? 16 to me. Oh, right, OK. <laughs> Do you mind me asking what you are? I, I identify as 28, but currently, <laughs> currently I'm 49. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> but so yeah, if you just like to give us a name, gender identity, pronoun, and an age if you want to. I'm Anna. I identify as non-binary, but I'm kind of using it more umbrella because words are hard. I'm Charlotte. I'm genderqueer, 22 years old, and my pronouns are they and them. I'm Harry. I'm non-binary, trans-masculine person. I'm Liz. I use kind of non-binary, but sometimes gender queer or gender fluid feels more representative. And I, again, I use bisexual to describe my sexuality. I'm Sarah. I'm intersex and identify my gender as non-binary, and any pronouns are fine. My name is Riyadh. Um, I'm a gay cisgender male and I uh, use the pronouns he and him and I am really really excited to be here because I feel like my, my education in non-binary issues and queer culture is at a very junior level. Do you think some people they don't want to be educated and that they, they sort of like repel it and they, t they turn you away? I think some people will be scared of it and kind of con like uncomfortable but I think there's going to be an also an element of what's that got to do with me? In some ways, that is ignorance in itself, mm. but that's also the nature of the beast of what it means to be human. Like, if I said, you have the privilege of being able to use the bathroom without, like, being worried someone's going to attack you, I'm not saying it's your fault that I'm afraid to use the bathroom. I'm saying something you haven't thought about that I have to think about every day is that using the bathroom can be mm -hmm. flipping terrifying. I've been confronted and told, oh, you're in the wrong toilet, or why are you in here, get out. How did it make you feel, though? It made me feel a bit intimidated, I suppose, but at this point, I've been experiencing that sort of thing for so many years that it just sort of, it brushes off quite easily. I find it interesting how much even us as a group of non-binary people, we get down to discuss the big things about non-binary we spend half the time talking about toilets, because this ends up being the obsession of society as well. Tonight's discussion was such an eye-opener, and there just seems to be a real lack of understanding when it comes to gender, and that for some people, 
it doesn't come down to something as simple as whether they're male, female, or for that reason, even trans. But it's small meetings like that that are educating people like me and making others who are in a minority like gender, non-binary, feel like they have somewhere to go, that they have friends and that they're not on their own. Queer just sort of sums it all up and you don't have to keep adding more letters to the ever-growing <laughs> acronym. It's a massive umbrella of different identities that people would identify as. So like, it goes from like trans male all the way down to like non-binary. I feel like it's probably the one word that describes me the best. It, it's just everyone really. <laughs> I'd never thought of gender beyond the standard male-female binary before, but there's a whole spectrum of identities that exist. At the non-binary discussion group, I was introduced to an altogether new label, and I'm intrigued to learn more. When I was younger, I always felt this sense of being outside of either the boys or the girls. When I was about 13, that's when it really clicked with me that there was something different about me and that I wasn't like the girls in my class. I remember looking at myself in the mirror and just thinking, there's something different here, there's something not right, and I don't know what that is. Intersex means that somebody is not completely male or not completely female in terms of chromosomes, hormones, or in terms of genitals. I identify myself as non-binary now, and I don't feel male, I don't feel female. Sometimes I feel somewhere in the middle. Nice to meet you again. Nice to see you again. Can I hop on in? Of course, come in. It's freezing out there. Cheers, thank you. I think for me, I didn't really ever think of anything beyond male, female, trans until very recently when I started to realise, you know, what queer meant and what non-binary meant. And even though I understood that people identified as it, I didn't actually respect it. Mm -hmm. until I started to meet non-binary people. Do you get that a lot? I think sometimes people do because they, like you say, they never think about the gender spectrum because they've never got any reason to question it themselves. So when they meet somebody who falls elsewhere on the gender spectrum, they just go, OK, I've never thought about this before and perhaps dismissed people like that. When did you find out you were intersex? Uh, I found out I was intersex when I was 19 years old. I have XY chromosomes, which is what you'd normally expect a biological male to have. Internally, I've never had a uterus or ovaries, but instead I did have internal testes that were undescended. And you have a vagina? Yes, I do. So naturally, at birth, the doctors and your parents are going to say, it's a girl. Yeah. Congratulations. And there was no reason to question it. After you got the news, what was the reaction that you had inside to that? What was going through your head? Partly shock, but partly a bit of relief because it gave me an answer to why um, my body hadn't developed as the same as what other people at school did. What was the difference in puberty? Um, for me, the main difference was that when people are supposed to be developing in the breast area and developing body hair and things like that, that just didn't happen to the same level for me. Um, and also the big thing was never having periods. So you're always taught right from being in primary school that girls have periods when they get to a certain age. And that never happened. Cute child, weren't you? <laughs> cute, cute, cute. If you say so. <laughs> I say you're a little demon though. What was it like in school? The main things that I remember were being called a pervert or dyke or just being told I was trying to 
get attention for myself by lying. I felt very ostracised and alone. I wasn't out to my parents until I was 19, so I didn't dare tell teachers in case, what if they told my parents? What if it just made people bully me more because I told a teacher about it? I just put up with it. it, it it's so mad to hear a story so similar to mine. I went through so many years of bullying in primary and secondary school and kept it all in because of the same reasons. Terrified that it would get home and that, you know, my big dark secret would be revealed. When the doctor told you, you know, the ins and outs of, of what it meant to be intersex, that meant that you couldn't have kids. When I got to be about 21, 2021, 20, um, I actually started to get quite depressed about the fact that I couldn't have children. Um, and my brain started going through all these scenarios where, you know, I really want children, I can't have children. Do I adopt kids and have a family that way or or what? But, and that did depre depress me quite a lot because I didn't have the option there. Let's take quite a lot of time off of university. And I went through a period of self-harming um, and that was to do with not being able to have kids and that but that was also compounded by pressures of university and other pressures throughout my life and also I was still working through a lot of things to do with gender identity that didn't help um, and that was probably my darkest time. When you were self-harming what was the motivation what were the thoughts that were going through your head as you were doing it? The main thing I remember is that, because I used to cut myself, when I cut myself, it felt like I was relieving some of the pressure that was in my brain, essentially. Like a balloon it, ready to pop? Yeah, something like that. It was like you've got a pressure cooker that's getting ready to explode, but if you release some of the pressure, then you're not as much of a risk. So I'd cut myself and it would feel a bit better. And also, I think my sense of self-worth had really taken a beating. And so that was another motivation behind the self-harm. It was some sort of coping mechanism that I was using. You felt worthless. Why? Because it was different. And Although I'm very proud to be who I am, sometimes being so different and so isolated can be a very difficult place to be. Hearing Sarah's story really got to me because although it's extremely sad, she's not the only one. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of young people like her who are going through the exact same battle and who are forced to a point of self-harm and potentially suicide. Not because of who they are, not because of how they feel about themselves, but because of how society makes them feel, because they're a little bit different. And I know it's dramatic to say that her label of non-binary and intersex saved her life, but I think it was one of the factors that made her feel more comfortable in who she is and to validate who she is. It's crazy what the power of words can be. Wait till you see what I have in this bag of tricks. It's gonna blow your mind. I guess like, if I, if I was going to a normal, like a mainstream gay club, this is, this is pretty much what I would wear. But getting the ability to just go a bit crazy tonight is really, really exciting me. And knowing that there's no judgment, no fear, and that, you know, the camper the better. Do you want a little hint? Um. <gasps> <laughs>
what you think? <sighs> I love it. For a rookie, I think I've done kind of well. All those years of sitting on mom's bed, watching her do herself, have paid off. Thanks, mom. Glyn and Amy, did you guys found Sig the Pink? We just started it as a reaction to what we didn't have and what we needed. We really wanted to create this sort but of celebrate utopia. celebrate the individual and being as ridiculous and silly as possible. Yeah. Did you realise how much of an influence it was going to have on the community with regard to openness, freedom and, and this queer movement? I don't think we could have ever imagined that we would be so much at the front of the kind of crest of the wave, no, you know no, what I mean? Because I think all it. of a sudden we've got this voice now. I always say we're the broken biscuits in the box. That's <laughs> you know, we're all the kids that didn't really fit in anywhere and the power in that is coming together and it being magical and united. People often say that when they come to see the pink, it feels quite scary, but then when they get in, it's like losing their virginity, and within the second time, they're like, yeah, baby, write it! <laughs> it's shaking the sky, and I'm following lightning. I recover if you keep me alive. What an absolutely incredible night. You know, being in there, and dancing and being free and looking and acting exactly how you want to, surrounded by other people who are doing the same thing. It's just an incredible feeling. When I started this project, I didn't realise how little I knew about the struggles people in our community face. But in the search for identity, validation and acceptance, we find ourselves surrounded by amazing people with incredible stories. I think as a community we need to come together and realise that the LGB can support the T and the Q and everything else. And maybe this Q is a neat umbrella term that leaves no one out. We're all accepted.